uh, you know, prairie grass. How We're using be, other strategies. How long before our automobiles are off of gasoline and oil and, and using something like an alternative fuel? Well, you know, I, I think that if we decided right now that we were going to make the kind of investment I've proposed, $150 billion over 10 years, then I think at the end of the decade we could have the, uh, a auto industry that has significantly reduced uh, our consumption of oil by as much as 35, 40 percent. Uh, and the technologies exist right now for uh, plug-in hybrids. Uh, you know, we should continue to investigate uh, the possibilities of electric cars. The problem is, is that we have not been serious about it, and Detroit uh, ended up uh, making investments in SUVs and large trucks because that's where they perceived a competitive advantage, and that's where they felt they could make the most profit. I think it was a mistake for them not to plan earlier. Uh, now we're seeing a huge growth in fuel-efficient cars that is benefiting uh, the Japanese automakers, and uh, Detroit is getting pounded some more, and I think that we can make those cars here in the United States. By the way, that's going to be our export market over the future. China already has higher fuel efficiency standards than we do. If we want to compete for those markets, then we're going to have to invest in technology. The government can help, but the automakers have to make some changes, and I uh, didn't say that just in front of environmental groups. I went to Detroit and said it in front of the automakers. That's the kind of truth-telling we need from the next president. In terms of climate change, global warming, you've talked about wind and solar and biofuels. Bio mm -hmm. What about nuclear? All, in all realistic assessment, don't we need more nuclear power in order to wean ourselves off of those same fuels that are contaminating the world? I think we do uh, have to look at nuclear. And what we've got to figure out is can we store the material properly? Can we make sure that they're secure? Uh, can we deal with the expense? Because uh, the problem is, is that uh, a lot of our nuclear industry, uh, it reinvents the wheel each nuclear power plant that is proposed has a new design, has, it, it, it has all kinds of changes, there are all sorts of cost overruns. So it has not been an effective uh, option. That doesn't mean that it can't be an effective option, but we're going to have to figure out storage and safety issues. Uh, and my attitude when it comes to energy is there's no silver bullet. We've got to be, uh, we, we've got to look at every possible option. You know, I've said the same thing about coal. I have a aggressive uh, uh, goal of reducing carbon emissions, and coal is a dirty fuel right now. But if we can figure out how to sequester carbon and burn clean coal, we're the Saudi Arabia of coal, and I don't think that we can dismiss out of hand the use of coal as part of our energy mix. What we are going to have to understand, though, is that global warming is real, it is serious, and that uh, whatever options we come up with, if they are not addressing the fact that the planet is uh, getting warmer, uh, then we are failing uh, not just this generation but future generations. We're going to take a quick break and come back and talk about some foreign and defense policy issues. More of our conversation with Barack Obama, Democratic candidate for president. We're live from Indianapolis, Indiana, the site of Tuesday's primary. And we are back. We're in Indiana. Why? Because that's the primary on Tuesday. We're in Indianapolis talking to Barack Obama, Democratic candidate for president. Iraq and Iran. The administration, uh, we have reported at NBC, are drawing up some plans for potential airstrikes in Iran at different missile uh, weapons factories or uh, special force uh, compounds because we have indications, evidence that the Iranians are helping some of their supporters within Iraq to kill U.S. troops. If it could be demonstrated that was a fact, would you be in support of such limited attacks in Iran? Well, uh, let me not uh, speculate yet. Uh, I want to I take, uh, take a look at the kind of evidence that the administration is putting forward, what these plans are exactly. I've always said that uh, you know, as Commander-in-Chief, I don't take uh, military options off the table. And I think it's appropriate for us to uh, plan for a whole host of contingencies. But uh, let's look at the larger picture. Uh, Iran has been the biggest strategic beneficiary of our invasion of Iraq. Uh, they are stronger because of our decision to go in. Uh, and what we have to do is to figure out how are we going to uh, recalibrate our strategic position in the region. I think that starts with pulling our combat troops out of Iraq. Uh, we have placed them in harm's way. Uh, we have fanned the flames of anti-American sentiment. We are di uh, uh, distracted from what's the real battlefront that we need to focus on, which is Afghanistan and, and rooting out al-Qaeda. 
Uh, and uh, if we put forward a plan where we are not going to be a permanent occupier in Iraq uh, and we force the Iraqis to stand up and uh, negotiate and come to a compromise that includes, by the way,